All right, guys, welcome to our first GarageBand tutorial. All right, so when you open up your iPad, you're gonna have to swipe all the way to the back because GarageBand was just recently downloaded. Um, once you get to the back, you'll see an icon that is orange and yellow and has a little guitar on it. it says GarageBand, pretty obvious. All right, so we are gonna start with creating a new song today and also learning a little bit about loops. So when you first um, pick to create a new song, you're going to have a bunch of options here. You're going to have smart drums, smart strings, all these different options. And we're going to play with all of these um, over the course of our unit on GarageBand. But for now, we're going to start simple and just click keyboard. Not smart keyboard, just keyboard. Now, first thing we're going to do is make sure all of our settings on GarageBand are um, correct. Now, GarageBand can get a little tricky in this way and that there are lots of fine details. So we want to make sure that all of them are set up correctly to make it easier on us later. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click this icon right here. Uh, some of you might have different settings when you first open it up, but you want to make sure that you're clicking a single keyboard, not double, because then this craziness happens. Um, so single keyboard, and you want to click the smallest one. This brings more keys into the screen, whatever. Today, you don't need that. You just need this small screen. Now, you should have C2 at the very left-hand corner and C3 kind of up here. If you don't, all you have to do is click this. It says glissando right now, but if you click it, it'll go to scroll, and you can just scroll up and down the piano. So scroll up and down until you get that C2. Put it back so it locks in place. Um, and make sure that this doesn't have any negative ones or uh, plus ones that's changing keys. Just make sure it's at zero, so adjusting those arrows. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click this wrench up here and we're gonna work on our tempo or how fast or slow the music is. So what is really nice about GarageBand is that it has a metronome, which is um, a steady clicking sound that helps us keep the beat. So we are going to keep that on um, and we are going to make sure that we also have a count in. Now, a count in is that thing that Miss Lee does when we go one, two, three, four, and then we begin our performance or our sight reading or whatever. So we want to make sure that the count in is on because that gives us four beats. Then you're going to click metronome sound. Make sure it's on woodblock. You can do other sounds, but for now, let's just do woodblock. And make sure the metronome level is nice and high. This is just the volume. So nice and high so you can hear it. So maybe in the middle range. Then we're gonna go to tempo. So this is how fast or slow the music is. Um, it, your default might be something different. I would like you to switch it to 106, whatever it is. Um, later, it, when I have you set your own tempo, it could be that you don't know the exact number that you want, the number meaning beats per minute, but it could mean that you have a feel for what you would like so you can tap it like, oh, I kind of want this song to have this steady beat and it will automatically adjust for you. This is a little slow. But for now, go up to 106. I want everybody to do that same thing. All right. Now, all the rest of it, we're not going to worry about other than to make sure, make sure the key's in C major. So it should already be there, but just in case. And make sure it's following the song key because that keeps us in tune. And then make sure the time signature is 4-4, which it probably will be already. Um, once you're done with that, and that's all under the wrench, we're going to go to these um, levels, and we are going to adjust the volume. I want you to make sure that your track volume, which is how loud or soft the instrument plays, is up nice and high. Doesn't have to be all the way up, but definitely above 50%. And then you can have a little bit of reverb, which just gives a little bit of liveliness. You know, if I put it all the way up, it's kind of like... You know, it's got a little rever reverberation. It kind of echoes a little bit. And if I had none, it sounds super dead, right? So we kind of want it right here, um, about a quarter of the way up. Now, please avoid doing anything else, messing with any other controls. These should all be off. Um, quantization should say none. Transmission, all that should be off. Um, I might be tempting to do echo, but it kind of messes with our rhythm a little bit. So we are going to turn off echo for now. All right. Cool. Now, one of the last things you want to do is make sure our metronome is on. That's that clicking sound that keeps us to the steady beat. And that would be this blue guy right here. It's turned off when it's white, and we turn it on for blue. Now, we are going to go ahead and we are going to practice playing our scale. So we're going to use a 
metronome by pressing play. So it's giving us that click sound, and then we're going to play. Now, I was playing along with the steady beat, maybe not perfectly, but we definitely want to keep it with that rhythm, so make sure your metronome is on. So you were just playing that. It wasn't recording or anything. It was just practice. Um, and you're just playing a steady scale, so you're using these white keys and going one, two, three, right? Just do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And to me, it doesn't really matter how you play it at this moment if you go... You know, you do actual piano fingerings, that's fine, whatever you would like to do, but you're just going up and down the scale. Once you feel like you've got that to a steady beat, make sure that this is rewinding all the way back to one, um, you are going to record it. So the way we record is we press this red button, the universal record sign, <clears throat> and it will start the metronome for us. It'll give us four counts, and we'll go on in. So, two, three, four. All right, so definitely not a perfect recording, but it is one that will do. You see these little green highlights up there, that means it did in fact record. Um, now let's say I didn't like it. I can press undo and it's gone. Now I'm gonna try this again and I'm gonna show you um, a, an annoying but interesting thing about GarageBand. When you press record and play your scale, If you just press the stop record button, the metronome keeps going and it's just the worst. So you make sure you press the stop button to stop both recording and the metronome. All right, now that that's done, we are gonna go ahead and set up a song. So next we've gotta go to tracks, which is this icon back here. So just going back here, here's the keyboard. And then we go up to these square and rectangle icon and we click right here. And it brings us to this track. So hey, look, it's what I just recorded and I can play it back for us now. So there's our recording. Now you can use this to adjust wherever you want to start the song. Um, you could start it right in the middle, wherever, drag it back to the beginning if you wanna hear it from the beginning. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to set up the parameters for our song. I want everyone to set their song up the exact same way, um, and then you can add a little bit of variety to it as we go on. So first thing you're gonna add this, you're gonna touch this plus sign right here, and we're gonna determine how long <clears throat> we want our song to be. So right now it's eight bars, so it's eight measures, which is eh, that's a little short. So you click that, and make sure our automatic is off, and you are going to bump it up to 20. So we're right here at 20. All right, so now it's given me a full 20 measures. That's great, but we need to fill this in. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to do, it's called looping, which is where we take a track and we repeat it over and over. Pretty self-explanatory. So there are two ways to do this in GarageBand, with a live recording especially. First, the hard way. Whenever you wanna do anything with um, any excerpt of music in GarageBand, you double tap and it will bring up all these options, whether it's uh, renaming it, looping it, um, deleting it, copying, whatever. So the first thing is, the hard way, is to copy, and then to double tap, and paste. And we'd keep on doing that over and over again until we had all the way through, but that's kind of, eh, that's a little bit too much work. So instead, we double tap, and we're gonna click loop. Oh look, and it filled it all in for us. Now, let's say in later, projects, you're like, I only want it to loop for um, eight measures. So you could have it go to right here and it just automatically loops it for you. But for now, make sure it goes all the way through. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to play around with tracks that Apple has provided for us. So these are tracks that are pre-existing loops. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this loop icon right here, click it, and it brings up a bunch of different things. So 
first thing we're going to do is we are going to pick an instrument to select from. So they have all these recordings based on different instruments. I would ask that for today, only choose unpitched percussion instruments. So no guitars, no basses, no synths, no strings, none of that. Just go with bongos, tambourines, shakers, conga drums, percussion in general, all drums or kits. So just go with those. Avoid all this other stuff. Um, it can clash a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and avoid that for now. So once you pick your percussion instrument, I'm going to go ahead and say shaker to start. It gives you some options to choose from. So you can sample all of them just by clicking. Okay, so that's one. Uh, look at this one. All right. So once you've listened through and you're like, yeah, I like these, then in order to pick the one you want, I'm going to just go with Big Marcos one. You just tap and hold and then drag it over here and make sure you drag it all the way to the beginning. All right. And now I've created a new track. I've got my um, recording and I've got this guy right here. Um, my maraca is my loop. Let's hear it together. I'm going to zoom back to the beginning. And that's something really nice about GarageBand is it already lines you up with the tempo so you don't have to worry about any of that. It automatically syncs up to what you've got, um, at least for something as simple as this. Now we wanna do another loop. Your project for today is to have this scale, everyone will have the same scale, 20 beats long, and to add at least two percussion parts. I would ask no more than four, but just keep it at two mostly. Uh, two other percussion parts. So let's add another loop. Remember, can't be anything too crazy. Let's go to instruments, select another one. I would like all drums. And let's see, I'm going to look here. Eh, I don't like that one so much. All right, so I'm gonna choose this one because it sounds awesome. And I'm going to tap and hold and drag. So ta-da, look, we've got three tracks here already. Now. In real life, once I let you guys have a little bit more freedom in this creative process, you can choose a couple different things. You can choose like, maybe you only want this part to happen at the very end, or maybe you only want it to go until here. You have control over shortening it by tapping um, and having this icon come out at the end of the track, where you can drag and make it shorter or longer. Um, or And you can also tap and move it down and around like this later times. But for now, make sure all your tracks just kind of fill in all the way. Now, another thing you can do, let's hear it all together. All right, so I don't think that's too bad. The other thing though is let's say I think um, the whole drums are, um, are a little bit loud as a loop. I can um, come over here to the sidebar, drag this out, and it gives me control over this volume. So I could do this and bring it down just a tiny bit. And let's say I really want the shakers to be the most important part of the thing. And I can press. So it's completely changed the volume. All right, so we have a song. It is a simple song, but it is a song. You can play around, you can experiment with what kind of, um, what kind of instruments you want. There are so many different ones to choose from. Um, I just did a little simple something, but Lord knows you got a lot more going on that you could do. So. The next thing you're going to do is I want you to turn off your metronome right here. Listen to it one more time. Make sure you got it. And once you feel like, yeah, this is a good song, you're going to click my songs up here in the top left-hand corner. Now that automatically saves the song. And it will automatically save it as my song. First, make sure it's got the right name, which is first, um, first name, last name, and the song number. So this is song number one. So you put song one. First name last name, song one. All you have to do is tap it once and it'll bring it up. Then next you're gonna press select and select the song you're gonna upload, in this case, song one. And you're gonna go to the export button, which is this box right here with the arrow. Now once you tap that, you have a bunch of different options for where you can upload it. Ignore all of these, including copy to drive, ignore that entirely. Instead, oh, and hello, that's my cat. All right. And you are going to be going to Google Drive. So you're gonna press this right here. It's gonna come up with all these options, ignore all that, and then just go on to press share. Once you press share, it will export the song and it might take a while, but it'll bring up this window right 
here. Now this window has not uploaded the file yet, but um, it just means it's ready to go. So now you need to select a user. All of your iPads are enabled um, with at least one user on Google Drive. I have made sure that all there are going to be some students on them because other people use these, but for the most part, you are going to be using um, GarageBand projects. So ignore any other student accounts you see on here and go to GarageBand projects. That's this guy right here. All of your iPads should have that account logged in. All I have to do is tap that. And so make sure it's selected fcdsgarageprojects at gmail.com. That's an account I made just for us. And you're going to press upload. And it will upload the song to that account where I can see it. And then you are all done. I can't wait to hear your projects. Thanks, guys.